The Great Search brought to you by Digikey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Ada uses power of engineering to help you, yes, you, find the part that you need. Or in this particular case, in this particular week, one of the um, keystone, could I say keystone? Keystone. I don't know. Um, uh, fundamental? Yeah, it is a fundamental force of nature now because we've been able to do so much with a chip. And uh, we were thinking, oh, did we do a great search with RB24? Turns out we didn't. So now, it, no time like the present. Okay. Uh, so let's go to the overhead real fast. I'll just show off um, like a board I've been working on. So doing a lot of board designs and a lot of them are featuring the RP2040. Um, you know, we talked about this chip a lot, but you know, maybe you, you got to this video from Google and you're like, what is this chip and where can I get it? Um, so this is a microcontroller. Uh, that does need a couple of accessories with it, like um, it needs a QSPY flash, and you'll want a USB port to go with it, and a crystal, and a lot of capacitors, uh, and then a boot button and a reset button. Um, but other than that, it's uh, you know very well integrated chip that has um, a microcontroller core. It's got a dual Cortex M0 running at about 133 megahertz, but like you can really overclock it to like 250 um, if you feel like it, and we do that all the time. Uh, it's got four analog inputs, which is great. It has two PIO um, machines, which allow you to control uh, more complicated um, devices that aren't just I squared C or SPI. It's got I squared C, SPI, and UART built in, two of each. But like you want to drive NeoPixels, or maybe you want to like BitBank DVI or USB host, or you want to do I2S. All these things um, you would control with the PIO machines inside the RP24. That's like kind of their innovation. It's very cool. Um, NXP also has this thing called Flex IO. Um, but basically, you know, a lot of times engineers have to bit bang with a microcontroller and it has like auto bit banging devices. Um, super neat. Uh, there's also PWM outputs and lots of timers. Um, so it's a it's a really cute microcontroller and it's very inexpensive um do note that of course you have to add an external flash chip which will add 50 cents and a crystal and that's going to be another 20 cents or so usb maybe another 10 20 cents so a total bill of materials costs about a buck um but you get 256k of ram in that sorry 264k of ram with that which is a lot and a lot of microcontrollers in this price range do not come with more than 8 or 16 so it's even though it's not a very powerful core, it's only a Cortex M0, not an M33 or M4. Um, you get a lot of RAM and a lot of flash in exchange, and um, so you know these powerful peripherals that may make up for the fact that it's not like a super ultra hyper powered, you know, um, Cortex M7 or something. Okay, uh, and then let's go to my computer. Another thing, you know, the reason we were on this topic was that MicroPython um, is one of the recommended programming languages. Um, the RP2040 was designed to be very easy to integrate um, and then also easy to run. You can run Arduino on it. You can run uh, Pico SDK, which is CMake, C, C++. Uh, there's also, I think, Rust um, ported to it. That's probably Golang, Lisp, a lot of other languages. It's, you know, because it's ARM Cortex, a lot of stuff um, is going to compile very cleanly to this core as long as you just have the peripherals you need to get your work done. So... Um, good news if you're like, wow, I want this chip. Is this affected by the silicon shortage? Actually, it kind of never was. Um, it was available all through the last two years, which made it uh, one of our favorites for redesigns. Um, yeah, this is one of the, I'll say it's a little bit one of the more boring great searches because you just search for RP2040 and there's like a whole bunch of stuff. The key thing you may want is the RP2040 chip itself, which is available uh under uh sc 0914 but you just google for rp2040 and and the chip is right here um the price was originally a dollar a piece but thanks to good price competition it's now available at 70 cents a piece uh what a good deal um 70 cents is pretty amazing usually that's what you would get for an 8-bit microcontroller like an 8051 core but here you're getting a dual cortex m0 with a ton of ram However, uh, you know, if you're going to use this, I will say um, you might want to check out, first off, they have great documentation, um, but we also have, if you want like a ready to go, I don't even want to look at schematics. We've got a whole bunch of RP2040 feather boards that you can use as your basis. They're all openly licensed. Uh, we've got like the feather RP2040, which we published um, basically when the feather with the RP2040 came out. 
um it looks like this you could you it kind of has a little bit of everything it has like a neopixel and battery backup and stemma qt and boot switch and you know flash memory so if you want to just kind of use this as your basis um to make sure there's a lot of little power supply things you just want to make sure you get right uh you can use um you can use uh this um eagle cad file and of course you can import that into KiCad. we have many many more boards as well so like this rfm board and this dvi output board if you want dvi output um the other option is though and and you know one thing that um Raspberry Pi kind of they, they like to make interest, interesting decisions is that the um, they also have the Pico boards and let's see this is probably under eval boards so um, there's a few like you know WizNet makes a couple there's a few like compatibles but the original is like the um, RP2040 Pico and what's interesting about this is it comes with these castellated pads which make it very easy for it to be pick and placed or hand placed onto a PCB and then soldered directly onto the circuit board. And there are people who do this because once in a while you're like, I don't want to have all the components and I want to like do the arrangement. I just want to like place this on a board and I'm ready to go. I can move on to the rest of the design. So this is actually available in cut tape and tape and reel. So you can get a reel of 480. And actually when we get them um, to sell in the Adafruit shop, uh, they come like on a big reel and we have to cut them out. So you could send this to a board manufacturer and have them pick and place it onto your design there's a couple of pads that are on the bottom you'll you know there's on the bottom there's pads let's see if it's documented here let's see this is the pinout so yeah so this is the um mechanical layout and on the bottom there are these test pads and these test pads are the boot pin because that's not exposed and i think yeah um the usb minus and plus and so if you want to have an external separate usb connector elsewhere you route them out um the led in case you want to have the led indicator be also available somehow and the boot select pin and that's how you enter into to bootloader mode so those are not brought out on the castellated pads they're brought out only on the um, test points there's these test points here this is the usb test points and these are the led and boot test points there's also uh three castellated pads here for swd for debugging and in circuit programming but you may be like ah you know i don't want to solder it directly on well there's also the pico h and the pico h it's a little bit of a hack because it's like why is this a, it's such a long thin board so this board um on the bottom it has this like structure with all the pins brought out so you don't get the test pads right so you're not going to get the boot select and d plus d minus but this is something where you don't have to solder it directly on and you can plug it in and if you're like well what's an easy way to have this plug in this is the same as a 40 pin uh 0.6 inch socket sorry it's what you call an ic socket um so the two by 20 i'm sure there's more than these but these are some like really quick ones you can get an ic socket and uh have this plug in so instead of you know because you're like well i don't want if i don't want to permanently solder it in why would i get it with pins you can get a socket and then have it plug in directly that way so it's removable in case like you want to update to um, like a Pico W, which they have with wireless, or if the Pico gets damaged. So a couple options for you for, for manufacturing. Um, but still my pick of the, of the week is the RP2040 chip, just the chip itself. What a good deal, 70 cents, and they've got 85,000 available at DigiKey. How can you say no? Where in the world is